This event was crazy. The episode six global live stream was the first time we've actually done a live event with people in the room. And so from Dallas, Texas, we had over 1400 crazy chosen fans, many of whom came from all over the country to be there live while we broadcast episode six to the rest of the world. And the fans were absolutely out of their minds. It was an amazing night we'll never forget. But this is the Come and See show. This is the post-episode show that we did. We do this after every episode where we interview people and give you a lot of insights and whatnot. So what you're going to see in this episode is I get up after the episode. The crowd is really into the episode. It was really great. I brought up my wife, Amanda, who shared a beautiful story that is still getting talked about. People are saying it might need to end up on a t-shirt where she told a story of why we do this show. And it's pretty powerful. You'll want to check it out. And then we brought up Jace and Missy Robertson from Duck Dynasty. And they they happen to be chosen super fans. They talked about their lives. They talked about the show, this specific episode, episode six, what they drew from it. It was really, really cool. Very funny as well. They're awesome. And I also debuted our new gift item, the uh, Come and See hat, which we had given to everyone in the room, but also made it available for the first time at the website. That was also really cool. And this come and see movement is really starting to build. Then we had an interview, and a, or I should call it a conversation, with Liz Tabish, who plays Mary Magdalene, and Ryan Swanson, who, are, who is our head writer. And we talked at length about the controversial, but also for many people, very meaningful storyline with Mary Magdalene that began in episode five and concluded in episode six. And we got into the personal side of this and why this story was so meaningful to us as a writing team and to Ryan specifically, but also to Liz. And so you're going to get some really cool insights into that. That conversation is still getting a lot of buzz and conversation about it. And then, of course, we concluded with more updates and a sneak peek of episode seven. So check this out. If you happen to be looking for episode six, that is in the app. So if you haven't had the app yet, and if you haven't seen the episode yet, you need to go download the Chosen app. It connects free and easy to your streaming device, but go watch episode six exclusively in the Chosen app. But here's the Come and See show. I promise you are going to love it. The scene halfway through the episode. <clears throat> Mary comes back and encounters Jesus. And when he looks at her and says, look up, um, I think that's the gospel right there. Look up. And we need that every day. We need that reminder every day. It doesn't stop. Uh, it doesn't stop when we believe. It still can be difficult. I want to read you something that we got um, just the other day. Um, and this is why... We do the show, and it's why the show is free. I said, hi, I'm not sure if anyone will see this, but I wanted you to know that I've gotten through most of season one, and I'm planning on binging the entire show in the next two days. I'm very strongly connecting to Mary because of our similar past, and I really think you all did a fantastic job. I'm not a Christian at all, but this show has made me realize that maybe Jesus wasn't as hateful of a guy as I've been led to believe. I'm not planning on switching religions anytime soon. We'll see. We'll see when she gets to this episode. She says, I'm pagan. However, we'll see what happens by the end of this. Ha ha. I think your God would be very pleased with what you all are doing here. I hope someone sees this because I know that a huge part of your faith is to spread the word to everyone. And I just want someone to know that you really are. You've successfully gotten a non-believer invested into the lives of Jesus and disciples, especially Matthew. I relate to him as well, and it's absolutely fantastic that you made him autistic. Anyways, great job. Keep it up. Um, So she said, I'm not sure if anyone will see this. <laughs> um, but the reason I wanted to read it is because it's also written to you. And it's written to you. Because you have been telling others to come and see. And do you think that she would have watched this if it wasn't free? Of course not. Um, she wouldn't have discovered a show like this. She wouldn't have paid money to watch a show about Jesus, someone who she says she doesn't know yet. And that's why we talk all the time about paying it forward. It's not a pitch, it's not a sales technique. 
It's a way of participating in what God is doing. It's a way of participating in what Jesus wants us to do. And if you remember in episode five, near the end, Jesus sends Matthew and Simon out because he wants them to participate in the work that he is doing. And that was true 2,000 years ago, and it's true today. And so that is why at these live streams, I'm always sharing with you, here's how to pay it forward. Here's how we, 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 the show is completely free. If you don't want to pay it forward, if you don't have the money, if you do not feel led to, don't do it. I don't want you to. But there are people all over the world in every country, some whom can't afford to, and some, like her, who would never, even if they could, they kind of stumble across it sometimes because of the work that you're doing. So that is why we pay it forward. That is why I ask you to join us in this process. That is why Angel Studios, who is our distribution partner, even came up with the idea of pay it forward, because they had this concept that, oh, there could be this feedback loop. Because when she watched that episode, that first episode and the second episode, it said beforehand, this episode was paid for by someone, and it gives the name in the, in the area. And then, of course, she's going to have, what, where this ends, we don't know. We have a good idea, but we know that that investment is not really a financial investment as much as it is a personal, spiritual investment. And it's your privilege, yes. Well, I, I, I believe that, and it's why I don't feel bad at, talking about it because I believe that we're all doing this together. I'm providing my loaves and fish and you're providing your loaves and fish and together we're going to watch God feed the 5,000, one of whom is on this piece of paper. But I know that she, because she identifies with Mary so much, needs to see the episode that you just saw. And that's why we're so happy that it was free and that she had a chance to do it. So. My wife is here. And of course, I'm bringing her up. Yes, yes. I didn't hear that one. Ah. Uh, that is correct. We celebrated our anniversary just a couple days ago. So, yeah. 23 years. You are loud, but you are knowledgeable, so I will give you that much. So uh, I know you had a couple thoughts that you wanted to share as well because you have an opportunity to be here. You were with us from the beginning, of course. You saw the failure that uh, led to something like this. So I, I know you wanted to share a few things. Oh well, yeah, when Dallas asked me to share something, um, one thing that has been on a loop for us as we continue to make new episodes as we're writing extra content um, is actually a story that we heard a missionary tell something like 20 years ago. It was when we were early married. And um, he worked with World Relief and he was telling a story about how their team was in Iran, I think. I don't know, somewhere where Bibles were illegal and you would be arrested for giving them out. And so they would go out under cover of darkness to deliver Bibles. And they had a whole group of Bibles under a, a, a kind of a hidden compartment in their, in their car. And so they're driving down the road, and I don't know where they were going, someplace they were going to try to give them. Um, but suddenly the steering wheel jammed and turned hard to the right. And I'm not a car person, but I don't, I don't think that's really a thing. Um, but that's what happened. Jammed, turned to the right. And they came to a stop under a street light where there was a guy just standing. And they get out of their car and they're looking around and lifting the hood. And the guy comes up to them and kind of broken English says, you have Bible. And they're thinking secret police, like who is this person? They're like, oh, what? No, I don't know. And uh, he said, no, you have Bible. God told me, leave my village, come here, you have Bible. And they're like, we have Bible. <laughs> so they got out the, the sack of Bibles. And in my mind's eye, I, I don't know if this is actually accurate, but I like it. It's like a Santa sack, you know? 
and they give it to the guy and he swings it over his shoulder and he hands them a wad of cash. And he said, this is everything my village had. And it came out to exactly the cost of the Bibles. And he starts walking off into the darkness. And they're like, sir, we'll come, we'll preach. Where can we come? Can we minister to your village? And over his shoulder, he says, no, Bible preach. <laughs> and he walks off. And the phrase Bible preach has become a phrase that Dallas and I say to each other. That's the heart of this show. I love this show, I, I love this man, but who cares, it's a show. Bible preach. So that's the mission and, and, and we're, we're thrilled. I mean, you just heard a story today about... I'll tell, I'll tell, that, I'll tell that later. Yeah. Oh, see, okay, yeah, I set so him up. Steal it. So uh, I wanna tell you what you've got coming up over the next few minutes. So. First of all, we're going to bring up Jason Missy Roberts here, and J Jason Missy Robertson in just a few minutes here. So, yeah, I know, I know, me too. I'm excited too. And uh, then we've got, we're going to debut our new merch. I don't want to say merch anymore; it's a gift item. Uh, we're going to do that because Jason Missy already have it, just like everyone in this room. Sorry, but everyone in this room got a hat along with. So we'll show it to you in just a minute, but uh, yeah, sorry. But we'll do it again, I promise. And then we've got a conversation with Liz Tabish, who's not here, unfortunately. Liz Tabish and our head writer, Ryan Swanson, who we recorded this conversation just a couple days ago to talk about that storyline that you saw with Mary Magdalene. There's a lot of really interesting insights that you're not going to want to miss, so please make sure you stick around. And then at the end, we've got a sneak peek of episode seven, which, yes, comes out Wednesday, a week from today. Yep. Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, episode 7 will be coming, and we will show you a sneak peek in just a minute. So, over the last couple of weeks, uh, how, how long ago was it where we be in Louisiana? Oh, by the way, real quick, Jordan Ross, stand up. Little James is here. Jordan Ross. Yeah. You saw Jordan Ross, uh, some of those beautiful work on the show is in episode three when little James is talking about wondering if he should ask God, if he should ask Jesus if he should heal him or not. And uh, we got more, more coming with that. So just want to make sure you knew that he was here. And uh, afterwards, uh, I will be back there with Amanda. Uh, Jordan will still be back here unless you have to get home to your kids. You can go back, yeah. And so afterwards, we'll have a chance to say hello to all of you. So I just wanted to share with that. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I had the chance to be on the Unashamed podcast. How many of you have heard of the Unashamed Podcast? Yeah. Well, I got a chance to converse with Jace and Missy Robertson, and uh, when I was watching Duck Dynasty, they were actually my favorites. I actually mean that. And so I was so excited to get a chance to meet them. And uh, they happen to be chosen super fans, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But they've also become dear friends Jesus, just over the last couple of weeks and have really poured into Amanda and me and have had a significant impact on our life in just a couple of weeks. So let's bring them up right now. Jason, Missy, come on up. Right now, what are you wearing? Let me see what I'm wearing. Yeah. Come and see. Yeah. Can you imagine the so, attention I'm going to get from people who, especially that don't know me, see this? <laughs> so uh, we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and join you because uh, this item right now, the come and see hat, is now the, the new item at www.thechosengifts.com and uh, what? yeah. What? What? <laughs> Hold on. One, two, three. 
www.thechosengifts.com. Awesome. Yeah. I, when that started, I thought it was going to be cool, and then it just totally creeped me out. I got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't sing it in the home. So, so I, I, I feel, I, I hate to interrupt, but I feel like if somebody just came walking by and they're thinking, what are these people drinking? What are they smoking? And I want to just yell, these people are high on Jesus. That's Ephesians 5, by the way. Don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Sing. I'll let my wife do the singing, but we're high on Jesus. That's where that came yeah. from. So thanks for having us. Yes. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, you, had a, you had kind of the first question, I believe. About yeah, this. well, this we actually, the, the women, by the way, vetoed putting this on on stage. We have more work to do, tucking and whatnot, and not willing. But... Yeah. We got to spend a day with these guys for Memorial Day, and um, they talk about Jesus all the time. Like, that's what they talk about. That's their heart. It was so cool, which is especially cool, considering you had this show, Duck Dynasty, that blew up and blew your lives up. And so it's, it's made me wonder, since I get to ask a question, um, how you guys have stayed so jesus Focus, or maybe more accurately, how Jesus has hung on to you. We built our lives from a very early age on Jesus. So a lot of people think that Duck Dynasty, because that's when you first saw us, that's maybe when our lives began. <laughs> but our lives began many, many years before that. And we have been married for 30 years. So... <laughs> Duck You'll dynasty. have to rethink your ideas on modern day miracles after hearing that. <laughs> They're real. My point is <laughs> <laughs> that the fame and fortune and all that only came the last few years. And a lot of times that does throw relationships in an upheaval because of that. But because our lives were grounded in Jesus Christ long before the TV cameras ever came to West Monroe, Louisiana. We decided, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> um, we decided that, you know, watching a lot of this reality stuff before it ever came to us, um, not only did we have a large family meeting saying that we were gonna hold each other accountable, Jason and I did it on a regular basis within our own family unit and within our marriage. And we knew we never wanted to lose sight of the one who gave us the blessing in the first place. So we said, if, and this is what Miss Kay says too, God, if the fame and fortune tear my family apart, take it away because our eyes need to be fixed on you. And she led us all in that. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think the reason uh, we, we hit it off, and I think when you're, kind of on this side of things as you're going through something you're not sure what's happening and you realize that we have built our foundation on Jesus you're kind of searching for the answers and what's happening and where are we going from here and we talked about immediately like all the persecution that, that we've gotten but the more I would read I was like oh no that's good this and I, I think I told you when we were talking about some of the comments, and I was like, oh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> Way worse. I said, that's good. Because, you know, those of us who believe in that the Bible is real and that God is real, because that's what I was sitting here thinking, thinking there. I was like, I'm surrounded by a bunch of people that believe that there is a God and he's real. So... I think we go through the bad days and the struggles and we are attacked. And I think that's when we rallied together as a family. But I remember on the first day of filming, I'll share this story. 
there was a cameraman that we grew to love. He, we made fun of him because he was older of all the crew. Most people were young except him. And we overheard him say, boy, this seems like a, such a nice family. I hate that this show will tear this family apart because that's what happens in this world. And so we brought that up at our first family meeting and we made a mantra that we stuck to, which is he hadn't met our family because we're part of God's forever family. And so we decided that God was going to use this as a platform, much like he is with the Bible story that you told. And I, I told y'all, because I loved you immediately, I said, look, the bigger this thing's going to get, the smaller you're going to feel. And you know what? That's good. That, that's what's drawing you to this. Jesus seems real. That, that, that's it. So uh, that's why we hit it off, because when you look at all of us, especially just my wife and I, you think, what happened here? And uh, she hates it when I say this, but we have nothing in common outside of Jesus. Don't say that either. That's we have a few things. But when I met her, I was, I was, and this is a long answer, but this is a really good story, and I think it's why we're going to be forever friends. I was trying to stay pure as a teenager. This is way belong, way, I mean, way before Duck Dynasty. We had no money. We were poor. We were commercial fishermen, a lot like these guys. I'm trying to stay pure because I came to Jesus at 14, and I was struggling with that. And I finally realized that if I'm going to stay pure, I'm going to have to announce my love for Jesus in the girls that I date. The first girl I announced that to, she opened the door and slammed it. And I thought, well, that saved me a lot of time. <laughs> but I told my wife, who I thought was way out of my range, I said, look, I want to tell you something right now. And I was nervous because especially when you're teenagers and you're wondering who you are and is this real, I said, look, I love Jesus more than I'll ever love you. But I believe he's real, and I'm looking for somebody that'll help me go to heaven. I waited, and she magically said, you're just the kind of guy I'm looking for. And I, I played it cool, I kind of nodded. But inside, I was thinking of that verse. All things are possible. <laughs> so to answer your, that was a long way yeah, to Bible say. Bible preach, Jace preach. Yeah. That was a long story to say, this is who we were going in. And so fame and fortune just became blessings to be used to show that God is real. So, yeah, that's awesome. So one of the reasons that I love Missy is because you are the one who brought the Chosen to the Robertson family, correct? Thank you very yes. much. So how did you come across the show? Because again, everyone who's here and uh, you're watching at home, the whole point of it is to spread the word, to, to, to tell people to come and see. And eventually they tell others. Two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16. And then it starts to get into the masses. And it all starts with you here, but eventually it came to you. I say, and, you just told my story. That, that's exactly Sorry. what I did. I mean, I, I saw something, an ad on the internet, and I thought, what, what is this, you know? And it, and it was almost the end of the first season, and so I thought, it must not be very good, because I haven't heard about it. <laughs> I mean, you know, in this COVID time of, you know, watching everything you can possibly find that's worth anything to watch, why haven't I seen this? Obviously, it's probably not very good. So I went on imdb.com because I don't watch anything unless I go there because it rates it. And when I saw 9.8 out of 10, that's when I saw it, it was 9.8. I thought, okay, hold on just a second. So You can I, tell them what I said. I said, yeah, but how many reviews is that? Eight? No, that's <laughs> a, it was know. thousands. That's, 
I know, but that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, I well, I didn't poop. tell him at first because I was not with him at the time. And so I just clicked on it and I thought, it, this is free and what, you know, trying to find it and all this. And so once I figured it out, which didn't take very long, but once I figured it out and started watching, I realized just the quality of the production first off because I'm big on that. <laughs> I'm big on that. I don't like the cheesy stuff. So I thought, okay, and I, it just kept me intrigued and watching, and, and then it happened just what, like you said. I watched episode one, and then I pulled Jason, watch this with me. I pulled my parents in. My parents didn't have the closed caption on the first time, and so my dad halfway through was like, I haven't understood anything at all. So I was like, well, well let's rewind yeah, it's like, welcome it to everybody else's world, over. Phil, because yes. they can't understand you either. I so. watched episode one five times. <laughs> Sorry. If Phil yeah. is here, I hope he didn't That's hear that. That's my whole life. I, yeah. I need an interpreter myself. I can't handle these accents. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we talk so slow. Because I'm like, stay with me. Stay with me. So that you, you finished my story by just telling everyone that I could possibly see. I had a Bible study in my home at the time. One of my girls is here, and I was like, y'all have got to watch The Chosen. You've got to watch The Chosen. And so it's like, it's kind of strange because it's almost like you hear that all the time. Like, right, have you seen, you know, fill in the blank on whatever streaming service that you have? And no, I haven't watched that, or I need a list. Somebody share with me what you've been watching. And so at first you feel like it's just one thing that's just thrown in there along with everything else that you've been recommending to watch. But once somebody gets it, that's it, right? You're in. I was in. I was like, where do I give? Where do I give money? And then I'm telling yep. all my kids, watch it. Don't pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. Mama already paid for it. You, you know, so you can do it. You can tell all your friends and all of that. So I, I wanted to just everyone to see what I fell in love with. And that was how Jesus was being shown in such a down-to-earth, wonderful light because that's who he is, and that he's intimate and draws us each individually to him. Awesome, babe. I wanna, I'll both share a little story. What got me? Because she said it was great. I was like, yeah, okay. And uh, she said, after episode three, I wrote him a check. And I... Well, I didn't write a check. I donated through the internet. I didn't write a check. I mean, I, didn't, I, don't, I can't remember exactly how you phrased it. I just meant... Money came out of your purse to there. Nope. And she knows this is a pet peeve of mine because, as most of y'all can tell, I don't look like a religious person. And I think that's why people come hear me speak because they're like, I don't believe in God or church or whatever, but that Doug Dynasty guy, I'll listen to him. And, of course, when they show up, I share Jesus the whole time. And they're like, what just happened here? <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, there's nothing more just that'll stir your soul is when you're sharing Jesus at a party and you're the only sober person there. <laughs> it's awesome. So what I was going to say is when she said she gave the money, she, she knows it's a pet peeve of mine because I don't like it when I'm, because we do meet every Sunday at a church somewhere. And I'm like, why are these people all the time talking about give us money, give us money, give us... Because I've always thought, look, if you share Jesus in a powerful, real way and people are convicted, the money's coming! So if you want to do a seven-part series on giving, let's focus on Jesus. And I'm in. So I'm like, let's watch this, babe. And once, once I started watching, I was like, I'm hooked. And the next thing you know, we were on the podcast, and I was like, we need to. I kept talking about The Chosen. Right. I, I started getting texts from people saying, they're talking about you on the Unashamed podcast. You should come on. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to get a hold of the Duck Dynasty guys. And well, then eventually your yeah. brother Al just reached out and texted me. He got my text from a mutual friend and said, you got to come on. Mm -hmm. you got to come. He said, normally we do it via Zoom because of COVID, but if you want to come, that'd be great too. And uh, he said, Miss Kay likes to feed our guests. 
I said, I will be there with my family. <laughs> that did it. <laughs> uh, no more questions asked. And so we got a chance to go to Louisiana and spend the day with your family. And I got to tell you, here's a cool thing that I want to mention too. Not only to talk about Jesus all the time, but everything you see is 100% authentic. What you saw on the show is how they are in real life. Uh, we went to your parents' house and yeah. it's the same house that they've lived in for 30 years. It's pretty rare. That's a nice way to say it's a rat hole. <laughs> yeah. There, there are not, rats around. We live in a flood zone. I saw a rat hole, but uh, yeah. it wasn't in their house. Uh, and so we got fed, and then the next morning we had Miss Gay's biscuits, which changed my life. So, yeah, come and see that uh, for sure. <laughs> so, um, but uh, almost immediately you started sharing with us your experiences and uh, what you've gone through and how you thought. I mean, I remember your, your dad pulled me aside and he just said, stay with Jesus because this thing is gonna, like he yeah. started doing this thing, you know, like it's gonna take off. And uh, I think he thought he was one of the first people to see it. So he's like, <laughs> yeah. I think other people are gonna like this too. You should show it to more people. So, uh, but that was really cool. But uh, one thing we said to each other right off the bat, um, I said, uh, that we would always be honest and authentic. And so I've not, th this is the first time you saw episode six, like you just saw it here with everyone yes. else. So you promised you wouldn't, you would tell the truth, but I want to, I don't care about your opinion yet. Yeah. Um, but how, did, did you like episode six, Missy? Did it pass? Um, a, a good answer would just be to watch my face probably because I mean, I teared up and I'm sure we all, a lot of us did at one moment. And I got to thinking about like, why, why is that so emotional? And a couple of things came to mind. One is, you know, you talked about, we talked about being grounded in our faith for years. We were surrounded and grew up in a church family. I did, Jace came on a little bit later. Um, that was always very welcoming, uh, not judgmental, very forgiving, very loving. And when Mary Magdalene walked in to the tent with Jesus, with Jesus's mother, it reminded me almost of my church family because for years, you know, in a church, when they do that, what's called the invitation song, I don't know how, you know, there's a lot of people in here, you've probably got a lot of different experiences with that. The altar call. The altar call, yeah. right. Um, our church, again, welcoming, years ago, probably when I was a teenager, it started to where when someone came forward to, and they confess their sins at our church, they come on the front row, they don't just pray in private with the elders. They will confess it. And no one does that alone at our church, ever. You're never in, in worrying about what are people gonna say about me or what are they gonna think about me because sometimes when the elders come forward, to, they can't figure out which one needs the prayer because they're surrounded by so many people already with their hands on them praying, hugging them. And that's every Sunday. Yeah. for years and years. So when Jesus' mother walked in with Mary, that's what I thought about. She had that support. Um, she had that non-judgment. Jesus' mother had no idea what Mary just went and had done. But she was there to say it doesn't matter. So that really struck me as the need for community, the need for the non-criticizing each other that whole speck in your eye, log in yours right. analogy came, came to mind. But then, of course, the moment is not just about the community that you're going with. It's that moment of bearing your soul to your creator, to your savior. Doesn't he already know? <laughs> it's, not, it's not informing him of your sin. It is abandoning that life again and I thought of so many times we, that, that old cliche, just because you're done with sin doesn't mean sin is done with you because there are repercussions of bad choices that you made in the past. So Satan will use that against us and remind us of those bad choices years and years and years ago that we made and when we think about it too long, then he starts using that against us as you're not good enough. You never were good enough. You're never going to be worthy. Give it up. 
and Jesus yeah. is right there to say, you are right. You are never going to be worthy, but that's why I'm here, and yeah. I forgive you. Amen. Yeah. I like how subconsciously or spirit-filled, however you want to get to it, because I do believe the Lord is, is working in the hearts of those who are putting that out. I like the, uh, the way they were all thinking where Mary was. and Because, look, who hasn't been around a table staring at the ceiling, having a conversation about teenagers? Who hasn't been there sitting there thinking, what, where is this person? You know, we're, we're just wanting them to come out of this alive. And so I know there's probably people in this room right now, you got a family member or a friend that's so low that you don't know where they're at. And so I, I felt that in that. And, uh, and so then having her realize what she's doing, Mary, and, and I thought even her, I, I, I felt like an appreciation for her acting basically like what we've all done which is a certain amount of vulnerability there, even if it was your job, you know? Because you all know we've all experienced this in some way. And then having to face him, of course, I, you know, Missy said that so well. So, uh, you know, it's moving. I, I didn't like it, I loved it, because it reminded me of all those nights, and, you know, I remember being by myself, staring at the stars, tears coming down my cheek. There was nobody around, but I was having a conversation with God about my life. And so our lives are filled with those moments, so thanks for, for bringing that for us. But not even that, I think a focus on grace and this, and it wasn't your idea, it's in you know, the scriptures over and over and over, all the people causing Jesus so many problems were religious people. And, uh, you know, I hit nerves all the time, and I, look, I'm mostly persecuted from religious people. And it's usually about matters of the law and rule keeping and I scream sometimes not very lovingly which I have to be reminded by my beautiful wife that even though I'm screaming grace I gotta do it in a loving way <laughs> and I like how y'all did that episode where you're using humor to kind of make us feel comfortable with, with, with watching this but you gotta realize Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He, he came to fulfill it. And is it so awesome that what he did on the cross, and, and cut these people some slack. He hadn't even died, been buried, and been raised. And they're trying to put their faith in that? Just, to, just imagine how hard it is before all that happened. Trust me? Really? So you know how many problems we have with that trust post death, burial, and resurrection. And I really feel like this show is making that a reality in our own lives. So thank you. I loved it. Okay, good. Thank you. Did you have something to say? Uh, uh, I just, I wanted to add a little bit more before if you jump subjects, because that was a really good moment in episode six. And with Mary before even in season one, episode one, that's when I first lost it was whenever he, you know, Jesus called her name. Right. And that moment of her realizing who he is and what he could do for her life. But I just wanted to brag on just what your vision is and your, the pull and the, the desire that you have to bring these moments. And it's not about Mary Magdalene. Right. And it's not about that moment in time. It's about us being able to relate to that and understand this isn't just a nice moment that we got to witness between Jesus and Mary. What you're trying to say to us is, you can have this too. Yes. This can yes. be you. Good job, babe. The last thing I'll say, because I know we're, we're on a schedule, <laughs> is look, there's, there's always going to be people around you, and there's always going to be in churches that say, no, wait a minute. I hadn't read that in there where Mary was down there in a bar. You know, I'm <laughs> Look, <laughs> that's exactly what they sound like too. They got that accent and everything. <laughs> this is 
<laughs> this is how my people talk, okay? <laughs> but all you did is you, you got Jesus right, you got who he chose right, and it's a reminder that's no biggie. We all have sin in our life. That's all, that's all it is. You look at the big principle that you identify with and you zero in on that in something that was along the right lines. And that's, that's what we got to do as individuals. When we come together, you think about how many differences we have and our cultures and our past and the mistakes we made and what we think about this theology and that. God brought us together in Jesus. That was his plan. That was his scheme of redemption. And what you're watching is God's scheme of redemption in their lives and ours. And that's why we're here together saying, yeah. If there's a way to live forever, this is it. So thank you. Jason Missy Robertson and Amanda Jenkins, everybody. Yeah, they're awesome, and uh, I know that uh, I just knew that you would be blessed hearing from them. So they've been good friends of ours and of the show for so long now. Uh, what I would like to do, because I know that that went a little longer than we anticipated, but I want to get to this conversation that I had with Ryan Swanson, our head writer, and Elizabeth Tabish, who plays Mary Magdalene, because they both have a personal connection to this storyline. So um, I'm just going to... I'm not going to do the jingle. I'm not going to talk about the new hat that says come and see that you can get at thechosengifts.com. I'm not going to talk about the fact that Miss Kay is doing Amanda's Bible study with her group right now that's also available at thechosengifts.com. Uh, I don't want to get into all that. I'm just going to go right into this conversation. So let's roll it. Ryan, Liz, and myself, enjoy. You and I, uh, and Tyler, um, in writing these seasons, knew all from the beginning that Mary Magdalene was going to be a key figure in the story. Uh, episode one was focused primarily on Mary Magdalene, but at the end of episode one, she's healed, she's redeemed. So now that she's healed and redeemed, how do we keep her interesting? Uh, she can't just be you know, episode <laughs> two Mary the whole season. If I remember correctly, you might remember better, but it was relatively early on that we knew in season two she was going to have a relapse. Yes. Season two seemed like the most sensible landing space for it, right? In our effort to make this a, a multi-lane highway of people's relationships with Jesus, we knew that where she was coming from and what was ahead, what challenges the road ahead would present to her, we're going to land her in some, some spots where she would be tempted, where she would be uh, facing traumas that she's seen in her past. When you were first reading the scripts for season one, I know that you had a very strong emotional reaction, especially to episode one, because it's Mary's story. That scene in episode one at the end is probably the most talked about scene, at least in the top three, most talked about scenes in the whole show. Do you get that too? I mean, do people reach out to you and say thank you for, yeah, for that and for um, the performance? Ever since it came out, the, the, the response to it has been, people have shared their own stories and I'm still getting beautiful responses from that now. And I think even what's going on in season two is rooted in that. Right. People's re responses and reactions to what's going on for Mary now is, is because they had such a, a personal connection with her in season one. So when you read the scripts for season two mm -hmm. and you saw what was happening, were you, oh grief, I have to go back to that place? Or was it like, I mean, okay, this is, kind of, yeah, this is kind of exciting, yeah. <laughs> um, as much as like the end of season one was fun, I also, I, 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 I'm an actor and I want a challenge, you yeah. know? I wanna, I wanna uh, try something new or different, something I haven't done before. And so when I got the scripts, I was really excited that this is, this isn't the same thing as episode one of season one. This is part two of it. You know, it, it's it's a relapse. That's a whole other mentality and psychology to it. And the dialogue wasn't a, it wasn't long or anything. The scenes weren't super long, but but the emotions were potent. You know, and and as I was reading it, I, I it was so cleverly written of like trigger here. Okay, trying to process that. Another trigger here, okay, I'm about to break, and then major trigger. I could understand how she could walk away, and I know that there has been some response of 
no, don't leave, don't go, it's dangerous out there. But I understood, I had a, an understanding of why she didn't feel like she belonged, why she felt that um, she wasn't worthy to, to be in the group and, and I don't belong here, so I need to go back to, to where I came from. But after that level of trauma of a, of a man calling you by this old name and right, yeah. at, trying to attack you, she shifts into not her right mind. Right, and so she runs back to the thing that had given her her comfort in the past, which is alcohol and which self-medicating, is- Self-medicating, yeah. Self-medicating. Yeah. Self yeah. So uh, we've talked about this before. This is not a secret that you experienced significant uh, alcoholism in your life. You've been now a little over 10 years sober, correct? Uh, yeah, almost 11. Yeah. Yay. But talk about this storyline, because this was probably your most personal, because you at least understood it more than more than Tyler and I do, That's in right. terms of what relapse looks like, what self-medication looks like. I have different vices myself, but this isn't one of them. This was your storyline. Yeah. Like Liz said, there's, there's a lot that goes into recovering such a drastic change. Like, at, at the atomic level, you are, you are transformed. And for me, that came from a, a brutal bottom a bottom that, uh, you know, the, the floor kept falling out and I would hit a new bottom. And when I was finally at that point where I asked God for help, I was ready for it. And it, it, and it took that, it took that moment to, to, to open me up entirely to how it could change and, and how God could change me uh, from the inside out. And so it was piece by piece. And all along the way, you have the opportunity to, to self-reflect. And, and that journey is fraught with ups and downs and long-term disappointments, things you're cutting off for the future. At first, you just can't imagine a world without the thing, the only thing that works for you. In this case, for me, it was, it was booze, but for, you know, Mary, who was um, somebody who was fraught with all sorts of uh, vices and, and uh, all sorts of a variety of traumas that I wasn't availed of, it's crazy what can trigger or bring back the, the need for the thing that works and works now. When we were thinking about the storyline in particular, we thought of all the moments that Mary, first century Mary might encounter that could bring you right back to that spot. So you picked up in the script on the, the first trigger, the second trigger. And I think I told you on the day that like when you relapse, when people relapse, people that I've been in meetings with for maybe 10 years or that uh, I've, I've had fellowship with, they disappear quick. Mm. It's not, you, you don't know what's happening. Because well, they don't want the accountability, right? I mean, you, you know that if you're mm -hmm. with of anyone, they're going to prevent you from doing what your body is so desperately wanting. Abs absolutely. And so Mary's character with the solution right there in front of her. But when, you, when that arc happens or when you make that turn, the last thing you want in the world you want is the solution. You want your solution. You want it now. You don't want the accountability. And so I think on the day, my thing was, Mary's already out. Uh -huh, she just I hasn't drank that. yet. Yeah, yeah. And there's that moment that you experienced at the beginning of the episode, of episode five, when you're triggered by seeing this Roman soldier and you fail in your, in your attempt to best it. You, you yeah. don't rely on the tools that you've been given, the Bible verse that you have in your hand. And that's the shame spiral. What I've experienced in my own struggles in my life uh, not with alcoholism, but with others, where when you mess up and you and you don't use the obvious tools you've been given, you're like, well, I might as well not even try. I mean, I, I, and, and you start to you, you start to feel bad about it, and that's what you're experiencing in the scene with Rama in episode five, where you're saying, I, I can't believe it. I had my verses. I just crumpled them up. I didn't even use them, and so you're already spiraling. And then it's funny too, a scene right before that where I'm, I'm teaching her something and she asks me a question and I can't, I can't remember the answer. My reaction to that is, is so much worse than the actual problem of like, I can't remember the rule, the grammar rule. Right, right, right. Um, it is, I am a complete failure. I, I forgot the, the prayer at the beginning, you know, hours before, and now I can't even remember this simple thing. Uh, there's something so wrong with me. I can't believe I can even try to pretend to teach you something like it it's it is a spiral it is a shame spiral that and then everything becomes so much worse than what it actually is but then of course when 
the demoniac shows up. Well, then that you try again. Really well, yeah, then you try again, <laughs> yeah. and, and you're actually doing well, pretty well. Like, yeah. okay, I'm not. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be strong, and that doesn't work either. Yeah. And then it's like, yep, done too for. Much. I knew it. I knew this was too much for yeah. me. And I think one thing that that happened to you in your life, where you fully surrendered, is what happens here in episode six which didn't, hadn't necessarily happened before. God, Jesus had saved you. Yeah. Like yeah. You'd, you'd been following Jesus around him. Yeah. He's, he's the best accountability. The, things were pretty secure. You hadn't encountered a Roman when you were alone. Mm -hmm. You hadn't been tempted much. It was mm -hmm. pretty smooth sailing. And so that's why for, I think for some people who saw this and thought it felt kind of out of the blue, isn't that kind of how it works? That it does come out of the blue in many ways? Absolutely. The instantaneousness of it is is, and, and I know before your moment 10 years ago, you'd had previous moments I of had had rehab. and eight years of abstinence. Yeah. And, um, and then I had a series of things happen. I talked a little bit about that with some career issues, some relationship issues. Had the moment um, where I just said, I'm just gonna have a beer. And it was like five, eight years had never passed. It was as if I had been a progressively worse drinker from uh, the, the exactly where I picked off, because now I was drinking hourly, mm -hmm. daily, and then uh, in short order, I mean, the last two years that I was out, I didn't take a sober breath. It was 24 hours a day. I would wake up long enough to shake over to a bottle, dry heave a few until I could keep one down, and then I, I was, that's how I lived for two, two full years. And it was quick, and it was complete powerlessness. But I had no accountability system then either. You know, and so that's why I say I wasn't sober. I was abstaining for that time. And this time I surrendered, I got sober. And you realize that your, pro your dilemma all along is powerlessness. And so when you've got power nearby, when you've got a source of power and you can access it, and that's also something really important that happens in 206 is that you leave, you leave the place. Yeah, that was that was a moment that I really I was excited to read. There's a moment while we were filming too of like being surrounded by all these uh, gamblers, and it's a rough scene. Yeah, and these, uh, these men who don't give a rip about you and are actually trying to cheat me out of my money and are are kind of uh, gaslighting me about the rules of gambling and mansplaining. I think there's a lot going on. <laughs> That was actually triggering for me in that moment. And I remember you were initially struggling a little bit to find to find the heart of the scene mm -hmm. and the emotional scene. Do you remember what we what we talked about that kind of unlocked it for you? Yeah. You reminding me of as I'm looking around at these strange strangers, their faces, that I should be surrounded by my brothers. <laughs> and these should be the people that protect me and love me and look around see all these men. Um, I think it can really register that you're in a room by yourself with these guys instead of the disciples. And that's, that should be Simon, that should be Matthew, that should be, you know what I mean? Take your time. That was the key to unlock it. And yeah. suddenly I missed my friends. <laughs> and, and I think it was a reminder of, um, I do belong with them. And then of course, oh leaving and being found by two of them. Who had taken, you know, who had gone to great lengths, these two guys who don't like each other. At all. <laughs> right, and they're pursuing you because Jesus told them to, but in, in, as we see, you didn't know this, but in episode five, we actually see Simon goes to Jesus and is like, do you want me to go? I need yeah. to go find Mary. Yeah. Like, and Jesus wants them to participate in this process. It's not just always him coming to the rescue. He yeah. wants us to participate in it as well. And of course, he's the ultimate rescuer, but he wants his disciples to start living out what he's doing as well. But then also the Isaiah 43 verse of, you know, the words, what do we say when we are scared? We say the words, uh, you know, I've called you by name, you are mine. I think remembering a phrase like that is this reminder of being loved and and that changes everything, you right, know? Because there are negative triggers and then there are positive yeah. things, right? There are things that make you go, like I'm pursuing myself, I'm pursuing my own desires, my own addictions, and then, you know, sometimes it's a picture of your of your spouse or a yeah. picture of your family or your kid, and you go, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah. And uh, you have that line that's so beautiful, he fixed me once, but I broke again. And I was on the <laughs> set just like, I mean, she- I think mean, everyone can relate to that. Oh yeah, too. of course. And it's like, I broke again, so now, can't fix me twice. Mm. Like he's, he wouldn't do that. And Simon even says like, Jesus wants us to bring you back. Mm. 
So talk about that scene because I know that that's that you said that that was for some reason you loved that moment. I showed up and just wasn't sure if I could deliver, you know. And then um, all I needed apparently was the sweet faces of <laughs> Paris and Shahar and the sincerity of the, the words they were speaking. It was real. It felt real again of just of kindness right. and gentleness and friendship and that 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 type of real love, you know, that every time they would say these things, it would, I needed to be where I needed to be, you know, instead of trying to force anything, it was just re responding and reacting to the beautiful words written, but then also the beautiful performances of, of yeah, my they're great, classmates. Yeah, they're great scene partners. They're so present and there, and, and I stopped thinking about, you know, acting it and just let it happen. Well, and Matthew says that the shift in the scene is when he says, I'm, I'm not a good person. And he basically is identifying with you going, and th this is the whole point of the show. I mean, this is the whole point of the Gospels, in my opinion, but which is that we're all equally in need of yeah. salvation. And we all have our vices and sins and struggles and desperations. And he's going, he's just, you're saying, he fixed me once and I broke again. I'm, I, I'm, it's too much. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm unworthy. And he's just like, uh, yeah, remember me? Um, I'm not great either. And, and you're like, no, 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 no. And he's like, no, no. I need to tell you this. I am, and, and that's that moment of vulnerability and authenticity that from, you know, again, I haven't been in recovery, but isn't that the, one of the bigger things is you have to be honest. You have to just embrace, embrace the, the crap. Rigorously, <laughs> rigorously, painfully, ruthlessly honest. So then the, the scene in the, in, with Jesus where, Mother, where you're like, you're still, I'm not sure I can face him yet. It's funny because it paralleled, of course, the end of, uh, episode one of season one, which I didn't say much, and and he what he said was uh, scripture, so it wasn't it wasn't like a dialogue. It wasn't us chatting back and forth. So in this one, it was having to face someone that you've hurt, right. you know, in a in a variety of ways. It was an apology that she doesn't want to quite get to, right. and she starts with, "I'm so ashamed, right. I'm embarrassed." I didn't even come back on my own. Like it's all these sort of excuses of still feeling maybe not quite worthy. Yeah, the big difference in the end of that scene that I think happened, or I know it happened spontaneously, was at the end of season one, episode one, Jesus reaches for I mean, you. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, ugh. In this scene, you spontaneously reached for him before it was scripted to do so. Mm -hmm. um, he was gonna kind of step towards you and, and you just like went, I, like, clung. yeah, you just clung, <laughs> which I think is a great picture <laughs> of the difference between that first redemption and the second one, which is the first one was like, I can't take it. The second one was, I need it. Yeah. I need it. And this second one is more like your surrender the, f the second time than it was the, the first time, you know. Great this one, This one will stick. Well, uh, it's also that, that that bond when you've d done something to hurt someone and they actually forgive you, you are you are more indebted to them. You you love them more. There's there's just like another layer of of gratitude, and and I think that's what just kind of came out. <laughs> yeah, it's been it was beautiful after episode five to get so many notes from people saying, I went through this myself. Thank you for showing that even after you are saved, you still can struggle. Because I felt shame about that. And, and uh, now that we've seen in episode six where that ends, I know it's gratifying for us as the ones who wrote it to go, okay, it's working, people are invested. I hope it's also gratifying for you to hear from people oh, who are saying, this is changing my life. This it's is, this is and, and your performance reminds me of what I went through. It, it has meant a lot to, to get these, the, these responses. And if these sort of challenging storylines affect people in this way, like, I think this is sort of a lesson in trust in, in the show of like, we're, we're going to take care of you though. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's going to hurt sometimes and it is going to hurt in the future seasons. This is a painful story, but it is the ultimate story of redemption and, and of hope. And so I feel like this is a nice sort of like, teaser of that, taste of that, of like, this is, this is how this belief system operates. And this is how life is. If, if he can help me, he yeah. can help them, yeah.
the reason we show you those kinds of videos is because we want you to understand that we're participating in this process as well. Um, I wanted you to meet Ryan Swanson. We've done videos with him before, but he's got such a great story, and that humanity is what allows uh, the show to feel human and to feel real. So uh, I want to just share something very quickly before we're going to let you go here. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, we'll be showing the sneak peek of episode seven in just a moment. And then afterwards, that's going to be the end of the live stream. So you're watching at home. The end of the live stream will be that sneak peek. Here in the room, I'll stick around a little longer because we've been getting some of your questions. And uh, my incredible, wonderful, amazing assistant, Julie, um, she got me, yes, thank you. Yep. Uh, she has texted me some of the most frequently asked questions, so I'll be answering those after uh, we show you the sneak peek. And I also want to make special mention of a woman named Catherine, who, I'm not sharing her last name because I think I'm going to say it wrong. I think it's Warnock. But uh, Catherine has been the linchpin behind this event tonight. You are here because she helped make it happen. So thank you to Catherine. Right. She is a new member of the Angel Studios team and is saving our lives every single day. So I appreciate her and her entire team. So many, so, so many of the people you've seen uh, help out have been because of her leadership. So thank you for that. So. Um, one last final reminder of the fact that uh, this hat and this shirt and this shirt and this are all available at thechosengifts.com. And of course, if you do want to participate in the paying it forward of this show and keeping it free for so many people, uh, you can do that at thechosen.tv slash pay it forward. Thechosen.tv slash pay it forward. Thank you for being here, for watching from home. Remember, it is not your job to feed the 5,000. It is only to provide the loaves and fish. And here is the sneak peek of episode seven. I come bearing intelligence. I bear fears. Good. It's about Jesus of Nazareth. Everyone has a part to play in the execution of this sermon. But what makes this sermon so important is each person will be there. We'll have him in our custody by tomorrow. Do not underestimate him. Jesus of Nazareth, you are sought for questioning by a Roman authority. Rabbi told us how important this servant is. We can't let anything stop it. Let's break him out. Are you looking for a man who performs healings on Sabbath? Tell us everything. It was faith who delivered this man a miracle. I know her. You must stop drawing attention to Jesus. How can we not speak about what we have seen? Jesus of Nazareth. We finally meet.